Welcome for everyone. So today we're looking at um, the equilibrium constant and we're going to start looking at some quantitative um, calculations involving equilibrium numbers. Um, so we actually already looked at the equilibrium constant in chapter one, I believe, or it might have been, yes, it was chapter one where we looked at setting it up for the um, developing the rate law equation from the mechanism that involved equilibrium. Uh, but anyways, we're going to go over this again. That's okay. So um, the equilibrium constant, uh, the symbol representing it is a capital letter K. Uh, most of the time you'll see it as this KEQ. So um, however you see it, uh, even just K itself is the same thing. Um, you're going to see many variations of this, but actually the setup of it, the way that we're going to go over how to do this is going to be the same for um, even in future chapters that will involve equilibrium calculations, okay? So, K is equal to, uh, in general, products over reactants, okay? So let's say we had a reaction, we have A plus B uh, making C and D, and we have an equilibrium process. So first of all, anything that goes into this K expression has to be a value that has a concentration associated with it. So meaning they have to either be a gas or be something that is aqueous. So meaning um, a solute that's in a solution. So things that are pure liquid or solid, they do not have a concentration associated with it. So you will only have items here that would be aqueous or um, uh, a gas. So when we set this up, it's products over reactants. You'll notice here it's C and D over A and B, and there they are concentration um, symbols. Remember square brackets, um, essentially concentration, and the exponent that is on that value is whatever the exponent is in your balanced chemical reaction. So this is the concentration of C to the exponent of whatever the coefficient is in front of C times, right? So it's like, imagine this is like multiplication here, the concentration of D to the exponent of the coefficient of D over the same thing for the reactant side. Okay, so we actually set this up before, so you should be okay. We're going to do this a bunch of times anyways. Um, of course, so KEQ is a, is a constant called the equilibrium constant. Um, KEQ can be written for any system that reaches equilibrium. Okay, and one point to make note of is every equilibrium system has a different K value for each temperature. So we know that temperature causes shifts in our reactions when we have equilibrium. So it actually will also change our constant. So you can have the exact same reaction, like A plus B is equal to C plus D. And let's say we calculated K to be, I don't know, 45. And that's at 20 degrees. If we change this temperature, you're going to have a new K value, right? So say 15 degrees. Well, you would have to recalculate out what K would be because the concentrations of your different components are going to be different at the new equilibrium for that temperature. So K is essentially reliant on the temperature that that system is in equilibrium with. So what is creating this K expression is something known as equilibrium law. So you're gonna laugh when, you read, when we read through this, but literally this law is like written words of how this is put together. So it says, in a closed system at equilibrium, of course, those are two conditions that have to be met. And notice, at a fixed temperature, so whatever the temperature is, it's uh, staying the same. At equilibrium, the product of the equilibrium concentrations divided by the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants where each is raised to the power equal to the coefficient of the substance in a balanced equation. So it's basically saying the product concentrations over the reacting concentrations and the exponent is the coefficients. Boom, <laughs> okay? So here's just another example showing you this setup. So remember these all have gas, they're all gases, so they will all be in this expression. We have products, which is ammonia, 
to the exponent 2 over reactants, which is nitrogen, the exponent 1, right? So you don't put anything there. And then hydrogen to the 3. So let's say this was liquid ammonia. So when you're writing this out, you would not have uh, a value there. It would just be, if you have an empty um, portion of your fraction here, like whether it's the numerator or denominator, it's like as if there's a 1, right? So this would be our K expression if that was the case, if this was not something with a concentration. Just to kind of give you an example. But that's not true, and this is not true. And that's not true. Okay. So let's start taking a look at some examples. So again, uh, if you want to pause the video, try these three questions out on your own and then see how you do. Uh, please feel free to do that and pause the video now. Okay, so we are going to take a look at this question. So it says the following gases are at equilibrium in a flask at 423 degrees Celsius. So they're giving us the concentrations of our components and it's telling us that these are at equilibrium. What is the equilibrium constant for this reaction at this temperature? So let's set up our KEQ expression. So we have H2 times I2 over HI squared, right? Now, them telling us this is at equilibrium is important. Any numbers that you plug in to solve for K must be at equilibrium, okay? So I cannot have the initial concentration of one and the equilibrium concentration of something else. The only numbers that should be plugged into these into this formula for KEQ is equilibrium concentrations. So luckily they're just giving it to us. So we're essentially just practicing to do this setup and to plug in our values. So this is gonna be 4.56 times 10 to the negative three times 7.4 times 10 to the negative 4 over 1.35 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter squared, right? Don't forget about the exponents. Now, when you're calculating this, um, there are units associated with K, okay? But because they are different every single time, it's kind of a known um, assumption that um, how do I say this? So it's kind of known that we never write in the units for K. It's kind of like if you remember writing the rate law constant, you know how those K units change depending on the order of the reaction? It's the same thing here, except there are many, many different variations because it's going to depend on your reactants and products and, of course, the exponents. Okay, sorry about that. I had to pause the video. Uh, okay, so yes, um, so the calculations for K, you do them as usual, but the units of K, we actually do not include. And you're going to notice that when, even when you are given the value of K from the question, they will not give you units as well. It's kind of like a, a well-known, you know, it doesn't mean it's unitless. Okay, it does have units, um, but because they vary so greatly, um, we just ignore them, <laughs> which is can be good news, you know, uh, less, a little bit less, uh, something less to think about. So when you calculate this all out, uh, we end up getting a KEQ value of, I believe, if you do this correctly, 0 0.019. And then for significant digits, you go by the values given. So just to let you know, to remind you, you may or may not remember this, but temperature, um, given temperature is not seen as a value to judge this by. It's the numbers that you're actually using in this question. So it would be the 4.56, 7.4, and 1.35. So this is two significant digits. So your final answer should be to two significant digits. Okay, number two. So we have here a quantity of, and they give us the concentration of NO2 at equilibrium with this much N2O4 at 60 degrees. 
what is the equilibrium constant for this reaction at 60 degrees? So we have K, KEQ is equal to, we have N2O4 over NO2 to the square, or square, I'm just going to do this in one line just for space here. So you're just simply plugging in the numbers, 1.73 times 10 to the negative 4 over 3.88 times 10 to the negative 3 squared. Okay, so when you're said, when you're doing these questions, I do want to see your K setup, your number plug in, and then you can just tell me what your K value is. So in this case, we need three significant digits. You should get 11.5. Okay. And then for part B, it says state whether this reaction is endothermic or exothermic by comparing the equilibrium constant for this reaction at 60 degrees to the constant at 92 degrees at the previous example. So I actually wrote this here so that we have this. So at 60 degrees Celsius, the K value is 11.5. And at 92 degrees Celsius, our K value is 4.4. Now, you have to kind of think of this one. So if you have a larger K value, look at how we are calculating this. It's products over reactants, right? So typically, the and this goes, this is true with any fraction, right? The larger your numerator is, your answer will be larger, right? So like in general, we can kind of make estimates here that the more product that we have, the larger the K value is. Now, they may not be the case every single time, but I would say that's like a good assumption we can make here. We really have nothing else to go by. So here, if I have a larger K value at a lower temperature, that means I have more product at lower temperatures. So they're asking if this is endothermic or exothermic. So you have to remember, look at the reaction. For it to push forward at a lower temperature, that means that I would assume that we would have, right, so uh, maybe I'll write something else to help prove this. Oh boy, sorry. A plus energy to kind of review um, the shifting, right? Okay, so for us, if something is endothermic, we increase the temperature and it shifts forward, right? So in just by kind of thinking about the Le Chatier shifts that happen here, if you have a forward endothermic process, that means that if you increase the energy, it would shift to the right. But actually the opposite happened. We decreased the energy or the temperature and we made more product. So that would tell me that this, right? So imagine, here's energy. So if we lowered the temperature, so we went from 92 degrees to 60 degrees, it made more product. So when we have a lower temperature, it's driving the forward reaction more so. It favors the forward reaction. So therefore, I would say that the forward reaction is exothermic. So you're kind of bringing in your ideas from Le Chatier's shifting to try and analyze the different K values that we're seeing. And then number three, Number three is a little bit more straightforward, except, uh, so let's take a look. So it has a slight variation. You could be asked to determine the equilibrium concentration from the KEQ. So normally when we set up our KEQ expression, so let's do it for this one here, NH3 squared over N2, H2 to the three. If you are given the KEQ expression, you could be asked to solve for one of your unknown concentrations, right? Basically, you'd be plugging in X for one of them and then rearranging and solving for X. So let's take a look at this more in depth in our next part.